Welcome to this edition of Christian Connections. Uh, so glad that you were able to uh, join us. Got a really good program lined up for you. Uh, special guest, uh, he's a pastor. His name is uh, Jonathan Orosio? Osorio. Osorio. Yeah. Sorry about that. I'm not very good with that. You names. call him Pastor Oso. <laughs> yes, that they do, yeah. Pastor Oso, yeah, there you go. Uh, bringing us a very, very special message. Uh, Going to be talking about the faith factor. Now, what is the faith factor? Well, in a few minutes, uh, you will be able to find out. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we have our good friend, uh, Dr. David Taylor, as usual. Uh, thank you for coming today. Well, thank you. Glad to be here. Yeah, isn't it a blessing? It's more than a blessing. And also a blessing uh, to the ministry is Shirley Hodgkins. She's here. She's going to be uh, talking about our special music. Uh, in fact, a uh, longtime supporter of LBN, isn't she? I am, and I'm, I'm blessed to be here. It's always great to see wonderful guests and friends like Pastor Oso. <laughs> I call him Pastor Oso. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's his nickname. <laughs> and, um, and our special music is another great friend of mine, Jesus. but also a wonderful friend of LBN here. Oh, great. And, of course, everybody knows by... Uh, well, by reputation as a director <laughs> and uh, kind of the leader of all things production, uh, uh, Daryl Mundell, also a uh, vice president here at Loma Linda Broadcasting Network. Uh, welcome back Thank to you. Christian Connections. Now, Daryl is uh, filling in for Ganim, uh, who is noticeably absent, uh, but he is not absent from you uh, or us uh, because he's always with. Uh, us uh, as he is right now at his daughter's bedside. Uh, that's right. He's on a special assignment uh, comforting his daughter. We talked about it last week. Uh, she's been in the hospital uh, about how, how many days? About a week and a half. A uh, week and a half? Mm -hmm. uh, serious medical condition. And uh, we just want to thank you for your prayers of support for God's hand in healing, because uh, God wants to hear from you. Uh, he loves to heal, and let's give him full opportunity uh, by your support. Uh, Daryl, anything to add? Um, no, just that uh, all those prayers are also uh, um, bringing up the faith mm. issue. Yeah. Well, and you know, this also re represents not only uh, Ganem's daughter, mm -hmm. but you know there are daughters all around the world that are uh, suffering a, a similar plight. Uh, maybe one of those is your daughter's, and so I, I'm just going to unrehearse, so forgive me. But uh, Pastor John, can you offer a prayer to not only for the mothers? I mean the 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 daughters, the sons, but also for the mothers and the fathers that uh, are agonizing uh, at this moment. Sure, sure. Let's pray together. Yeah. Father, we thank you so much for giving us an opportunity to come to you, God. And Lord, I love, I love that faith, God, allows us to approach you in confidence to the throne of grace, God. You love listening to us as your children speak to connect with you, to talk with you. And today we, we come before you with some petitions in our hearts, God, and we pray for um, the families that are agonizing and are hurting over their loved ones by the bedside, God. I pray that you can, Lord, you hear their cries and you hear, and also, God, you call us the assurance that you will comfort in those times. And so we pray for them at this moment, God. Please, Father, we pray for them, Lord, as we you called us to. And we know that prayer, you can do more in this single moment that we could ever do in our life. So that's what we pray. We thank you for hearing our prayers, Father. We thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to be there, to be the comforter. And Lord, we thank you so much for being our God, our friend and our Father, and most of all, our Savior. In Jesus' name we pray. Together we say, Amen. 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 Oh. Thank you, Pastor. Yeah. Well, I think it's time for some great music. We have great music indeed, and Gigi Noval, Dr. Gigi Noval, will be gracing us uh, with her ministry in music. Like I said before, she's a great friend of LBN, and we're so glad to have her here, and she's going to be singing my tribute. i 
She's pretty good, isn't she? She's wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful message. A wonderful message, especially after what we were just talking about before the song. Mm. To God be the glory yeah. Mm. Yeah. in whatever happens mm. in our lives. Mm. Well, we're talking uh, to our special guest, Pastor mm -hmm. Jonathan mm. Osorio. And uh, where are you from? So I was born and raised in uh, the Los Angeles area, San Fernando Valley. Mm -hmm. um, born and raised there, and uh, then after that, I've been moving around from place to place. With when you when you serve God, He takes you places you never thought, never imagined. So it's been a journey, mm -hmm. a paid journey for sure. Uh, associated with any particular church here in Southern California? Yeah. So we're currently at Ukaipa Seven Day Adventist as uh, the young adult and family ministry pastor there. Yeah. Uh, do you have a large population of young adults in yeah. your church? So we, we, thankfully this season, you know, as we're coming out of the pandemic, we, um, you know, it's been, it's been definitely something that I love the fact that people are coming out and looking for fellowship and community. And I mm -hmm. think that's something huge for, for young adults. They're looking for community. So thankfully, yeah, we've, we've been gathering a group. And mm -hmm. so this upcoming Saturday, we're getting a Friendsgiving and just kind of celebrating all God has done in this last year. So just thankful for that and just thankful to be able to build community with mm -hmm with the young adults there. So where can people learn more about uh, your church and your ministry? Definitely, definitely. So they can uh, find us at ukaipasda.org. Mm -hmm. And um, that's something we do. And so, yeah, we, we tend to do that. Or Instagram at The Space, creating a space for them. So at The Space 909. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you for uh, joining us today. Thank you so much. For this edition of Christian Connections. Now, Sheila, he's going to be talking about Faith Factor. What does that mean to you? You know, um, 
it means basically that's just the basis of of the Christian walk is having that faith. If it's not for that, we can't we can't um, hope for things, you know. Mm. So faith allows us to hope for things that we can't see. Mm. Right. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, if you have your Bibles handy, open them. Uh, whether you've got the uh, analog version. Uh, like I act, like to use, and I see you, Pastor Jonathan likes to use, uh, or the digital version that uh, Sheila and Ganim and and here you go, look, Daryl, he's got one too, uh, to the book of Hebrews. You're going to find that uh, in the New Testament, and I think the pastor's going to start right about chapter 11, so uh, that'll get you ready. Now, Daryl, faith plays what role in a Christian's life? It's the foundation of everything. Without faith, you have no hope. Without faith, there is no God. Without faith, there is no Christianity. It seems the world is you know, bent on a world without God these days. Well, that, that would be true. Yeah, so what, what is our duty? Have faith. <laughs> well, and share it. Share it, go to all the world and share it. Mm. Meaning of faith, uh, Dr. Taylor. Many times we say, keep the faith. Mm. Don't keep it, share it. Mm. And that's what it's all about, mm. sharing that faith. Mm. Vitally important. You know what I call faith, F-A-I-T-H. Mm. Forsaking all I trust him. Oh, amen. Now, yeah. That's the faith yeah. element. But it goes beyond that, which you'll find out mm. in the presentation from our pastor. Well, let's find out right now. Pastor, take yeah. the, the stand sure, there sure. and uh, deliver your message. Uh, Thank it's you called so much. Faith Factor here on Christian Connections. Pastor awesome. Jonathan Osorio. Awesome. Well, it's so good to be here with you guys. Thank you so much for allowing me this opportunity to come on here and to share a little bit about what God has placed in my heart today to share with the community here today. Um, just a little bit about me, you know, just kind of grew up here and as well. Just want to also thank God for in this season, I've become a father. So we have two amazing boys, Josiah, who's four, Isaiah, who's two, and we have one on the way. So we have three boys. People say, you're going for the basketball team. I say, I pretty much have the basketball team with three boys and my wife and myself. We make the the five, the starting five, but uh, love, love playing basketball. Dr. Taylor earlier said, hey, do you play basketball? I said, how do you know? And then we started talking a little bit about the Lakers and you already know, man, we just keep, keep the Lakers in prayer, man. We need prayer right now as well. But, um, you know, it's good to be here with you guys. I'm excited to share this word for you guys. If you have your Bibles, just turn to me to, uh, to Luke chapter 18, verse eight. There is this scripture that has been really um, I would say kind of speaking to me and challenging me as well. And I would love to share that with you. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 18, verse 8. And I want to start off with this text and then we'll get into the message today. Luke chapter 18, verses 8. And it says this. It says, I tell you this, Jesus says his words. I tell you, he will grant justice to them quickly. But when the son of man returns, which I think we're all looking forward to that day. But when the Son of Man returns, his second coming, how many will he find on earth who have faith? Let us pray. God, Lord, as we continue to marvel at who you are and continue to explore and continue to dig deeper into your word, God, we pray that your spirit can continue to enlighten us and allow us to see something, speak to us, inspire us through your word. It's our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to speak to you guys just for a couple of minutes on the message I've entitled Faith Factor. Coming from this text and going to a little text, we'll find out. But a couple years ago, I remember growing up, one of the shows that I used to watch um, and, and for some reason, I became a regular watcher of this show was the show was called Fear Factor. 
I don't know many of you guys have maybe watched this show or not before, but just for those that maybe have never watched this show. So Fear Factor was a show that was televised, and I remember coming home, and I knew the time the slot that it would be. I knew that I would have to get ready and finish all my homework. I was about 13, 14 years old, but I knew that I needed to watch this show. There was something about this show that was, I was just felt connected to. It was a show, Fear Factor. And I remember if you've never heard the show or never watched an episode, it was a show that pretty much included, uh, uh, included all these stunts, all these things that people would do, whether it was a, 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 a pool full of sharks and the person had to go in there and maybe go underneath and swim with sharks to grab a flag. And so, or, or it was maybe a person that was full of spiders in that room and they had to go in there and crawl their way around these spiders. Or maybe it was one of those dangerous vipers or crocodiles that they had to kind of manure. And I'll be honest with you, man, my arms, my heart would be, I mean, I, I remember when they would go to commercials and be like, what's gonna happen next? And I literally, my, my, I would sweat, there would be everything coming and I just look around me and I couldn't believe what I was watching. I remember just bouncing back and forth and just being in tune with what was happening and this faith factor, this idea of the emotions and the idea of all of this that was happening. And I remember at some point or another, I would cover my eyes because I was like, are they going to do this? Are they going to be able to, 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 to get past this one challenge? And of course, by the end of the thing, whoever won received a grand prize of $50,000. And so as, we, as I tuned in, I remember watching not just one episode, but I knew that right after that episode, there would be another episode of Fear Factor, and I, I was just glued to the TV. But there was something that it produced in me as well. There was something that as I watched that show produced in me, and I started to notice that it got me thinking of our world today and how many people today are in the same state of affair. How many of us are watching the news, are watching what's happening in the world around us, are watching and tuning in and just seeing every breaking news and this happening here and the calamities and everything that's happening around us and we're glued in and it's also producing something in our lives. It's maybe producing this fear. What's going to happen next? How am I going to get through this? How am I going to go about it? And, and you might be glued into that TV watching all of that's happening today, just like I was when I was watching this. And we see it all around us, whether these last couple of months or years, we've had wildfires here in California. We haven't had an earthquake in a while, but, you know, everybody keeps speaking about one or wherever you're tuning in. There's things that are happening constantly around us. And we're asking ourselves and watching and thinking, this state of fear factor, living in a constant fear. And all of this as we watch is producing something in us. It's interesting because in these fearful times, Jesus was preparing his disciples. He, Jesus was preparing to come back. And what he was looking for as we look here is what was Jesus looking for in his people was one thing. He says, when the Son of Man returns in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, will he find people of faith? If there's one thing that Jesus was looking for when he walked on this earth, one of the things that I'm amazed at, that when Jesus, the Bible says he, he was amazed, it marveled him, it, it, it surprised him. If there's one thing that surprised Jesus was people of faith. It was something that had him. It was something that locked him. It was something that when he notices, that's, that's, that's my child. That's a person that I see has faith. And I love it because let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11 and to understand and unpack what is faith. You might be answering or asking yourself the question, well, pastor, what is faith? What is this faith factor? How can I live in this state of faith? You know, it's interesting that the word factor here, uh, it, it's, it's this idea of influence that produces something in us. It's a result or outcome, a factor, a result or an outcome. And now how can we produce faith? I love it because Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says this. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And I, I think we were reading it earlier, but look at what it says. It says, faith is, in, in your translations, it might say, uh, faith is the confidence. Faith is the assurance of the things hoped for that will actually happen. It gives us the assurance about the things we cannot see. 
If I was to ask you, have you ever seen God? It's hard because we've, this thing about faith is hard sometimes because we don't see it. But there's something that it produces in us in this idea of believing it. I love it because here it says this whole chapter, if you have a chance, everything starts off by, by faith, by faith, by faith. If there's something that we had to just kind of look at all scripture and kind of look at the totality of scripture, we see that everything is by faith. Abraham lived by faith. Noah lived by faith. He walked by faith. Abraham walked by faith. Now the question is, what is faith? Let me start by telling you what faith is not. Let me share with you. Faith let me, is not a feeling. Now, we live in a culture today that many times when we look at ourselves, we, we tend to go by our feelings. We tend to go by our feelings. You see, if you, if you feel sometimes, uh, you see feelings sometimes take the best of us. I know it does for me. It takes the best of us. If you feel like you have it, um, then you, you think you have it. Faith, faith, we, faith is not feelings. Faith that doesn't include feeling. Let me, let me tell you another thing that many people resonate with. It. Faith is not wishful thinking. So faith is not wishful thinking. Maybe we have heard people, some say, I wish I could lose 10 pounds. I wish I could be there. I wish I could fly. I wish I could go there. I wish I could be. But faith is not wishful thinking. I wish I could spend more time with Jesus. I wish my family came to visit. Wishful thinking is not faith. Faith is also contrary to seeing. Let me explain. The Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. You see, you, we live in a culture and a society that stimulates our seeing. We, we live in a culture and a society that everything we do, we need to see it. There's this idea prevalent. We need to see it in order to Believe it. But yet, contrary to what Scripture says, the Bible says we walk by faith and not by sight. It says we, we, we walk by faith. So what is faith and how can we start to live not on this fear factor, not on this feeling factor, but on a faith factor? How can we live this out? The question you might be asking, okay, pastor, it's not, faith is not wishful thinking. Faith is not feelings. But what is faith? Here the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1, faith is the substance or confidence of the things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I love it because this word right here, if you want to circle it in your Bibles, I've circled it in mine. Faith is the confidence. When you look at the original word in this Greek word right here, the word is hypo, hypostasis, hypostasis. And what it means is, it, is, it means this, it means to stand under. It means something that you stand under. I think somebody earlier said something about faith is a foundation, right? Something that you stand under. It's interesting that I get the chance to pretty much a couple years, like a couple months ago, just drive around here at the uh, Loma Linda area. And every time I would see, I would see this huge hospital starting to develop. But before it could go up, there was something I remember, I, I clearly remember that as I drove every morning, because I love playing basketball at 6 a.m., 5 a.m., I would see this crowd of workers just walking in faithfully, going in. And it took, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, it took longer to build that foundation than to actually build the building. Because I remember just, I was like, wow, they're finished already with the building. But that foundation, they took months and months and months to dig deep and to just, I remember looking down on the hospital, the new Loma Linda hospital. I remember looking down and just seeing how much they had dug so deep in order to build a strong foundation. And yet later on, we see this beautiful building that stands. But there was something that was grounded. There was something that was built under. The question is, what are you building underneath you right now? How, what is that solid foundation? It says faith is the confidence. It's that, it's that foundation. It's something that stands under. An example of this that always reminds me is, I don't know about you, but one of the things that God is teaching me in this season or not is the word patience. Now, one of the places that I at least have patience is, and for some reason everybody tends, tends to be there, is when I'm going to Costco, and the one thing I try to do is fill up on gas. Now, I don't know if you've seen that line, but it drags around. And literally, I'm like, Lord, give me patience because it takes forever to get into that Costco gas line. And I remember as I was, it's always a reminder to me that when I'm on empty, 
I need to do something. And that means I need to get and fill up the car with gas. And one of the things about gas that's important in the car is because without gas, there's no, if, if we don't put fuel on the tank, the car doesn't run. And yet it reminds me of something that's underneath, something that's making that motor run, something that's allowing that thing to go. And what is it? It's pretty much that moment. And same thing in our spiritual and our Christian walk. Are we filling ourselves with faith? Now, how do we fill ourselves with faith? The Bible says faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing the word of God. You see, you and I, the moment we open this word, the moment we allow the word to sink into our hearts, the moment we read the word and the word reads us, the moment we allow these moments, we are injecting and we are filling ourselves or fueling ourselves with faith. The moment we allow the word to speak to us and allow for us to say, like verse 6, says, it is impossible to please God without faith. Faith comes by hearing. I remember somebody told me something so deep and I never forgot this. I remember finishing a basketball game and I was sweating and, and I told the man, I, I'm having a hard time reading the Bible. I just, I open it, but I, I, I'm having a hard time reading. I, 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 I read a verse and then I get sidetracked or I do this and I just sidetracked and he said something to me I'll never forget. He says, Jonathan, the Bible says that faith doesn't come by reading the word, but it comes by hearing the word. He says, why don't you try putting your your headphones on, connect it to the Bible and just press play and let the, hear the word of God. Let, let's just hear the word of God, allow the word. And I'll be honest with you, the moment I started to do that in my spiritual walk, I started to notice that I could close my eyes and just hear the word of God. And I just, there was something that the word of God was doing in my life. And so this is the question. Faith comes by hearing, the Bible says, and hearing the word of God. Faith allows us that in shaky moments, we can stand firm. Faith is the foundation that keeps us grounded. Matthew 7, 24 to 27 says, anyone who listens to my teachings and follow them is like a wise person who builds a house on what? On a solid rock, on the foundation. Though the rain comes and the floodgates come and winds come, it won't collapse because it's built on a bedrock. I love it. It reminds me of that song that we used to sing back in the day. You know, remember that song, that famous song, you know, build your house on the rock. I love it because Jesus was sharing with me and he was, he is looking, if there's something that Jesus is looking for us today is as he's preparing to come and take us home, are we living a life of faith? Are we fueling ourselves with faith just like we fuel our cars every day with gas when we're empty are we filling ourselves with the word of god are we allowing the the word of god to sink into our hearts and to allow the word to change us day by day i love it because if you look at hebrews chapter 12 just right after the chapter 11 it closes off with this and as i close off it says this therefore since we're surrounded Right, you're not, this is the beauty about this faith journey that we're on. You're not alone on this. You, you might feel alone, but you're not alone. There's people that have come before us. There are people that are coming ahead of us. But we're surrounded, the Bible says, by such a crowd of witnesses, such a crowd of people that have lived a life of faith. So let us strip of everything that weighs us down, especially the, the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race that God has set before. And the question is then, how do we do this? How do we continue to run this endurance? How do we continue to go on this path that God has us? Look at what the Bible says in verse two. We do this by keeping our what? Our eyes on Jesus. How do we do this? The Bible says, how do we do this? We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. I love it because here it says, it's keeping our eyes on Jesus. How do we continue this faith factor? How do we continue to stand on solid ground? I don't know about you if you've ever been a part of, a, of an earthquake. I never forget when I was, it was in the year 1994, I believe. We were in Northridge, California. And I never forget this moment. I think I was like about, I was about seven, seven years old. And I remember 
I remember that thing starting to shake in my house like I've never felt in my life. And I remember my dad coming and saying, hey, go straight to the table. Go straight. Go underneath. Go underneath. Five, and I remember him grabbing me, my brother, my little, my little sister was a couple months old. And I remember all of us, the whole family, just rushing to just get underneath the table. Because it started to shake, and it was shaking hard. And uh, if you remember that earthquake or not, there was so many people. I think it was like a 9.4. And, and I remember it was shaking and shaking. And I was like, I was scared out of my, like my, I just didn't know what to do. And I was like, Dad, is everything going to be, you're going to be all right. Just stay underneath this table. And I remember as I stayed underneath the table, I would look around, and my dad says, hey, it's okay. It's okay. We are, this will protect us. And I remember as I looked into that moment and I remember it's the same with our faith. Jesus is willing to be that table in our lives that continuously holds us together. See, we do this, the Bible says, by keeping our eyes on Jesus. You see, it reminds me of that moment in Peter as he stepped out of the waters. He, was, he, he started to look at Jesus and what happens as he looked into Jesus' eyes, he started to walk on water. The moment he what? The moment he lost track of Jesus' eyes, what happened? He started to sink. And that's the same thing in our lives today. The moment we take our eyes off of Jesus, the moment we start to sink. The moment we start to get sidetracked and distracted by all the things that are happening in our world today. The moment we start to say, well, what is going to happen in my life? The moment we start to just find ourselves restless and how am I going to do this with my family? How are we going to get this? The moment we start to go through all of this. But I want you to know this. It starts by keeping our eyes on Jesus. I love it because as I close off this today. I love this person, uh, one of my pastors, he told me this, and I'll never forget. We've kind of come out of a crisis. We come out of a pandemic. There's so much emotions. There's many things that this season has taught us and shaped us, and a lot of things have happened this last year or so. But he says something to me I'll never forget, and I hope you can never forget this. If you remember, just remember this. It says this. We don't focus on the crisis. We focus on who Christ is. And I want you today to be that your focus. To not focus on the crisis that's so sometimes all around us and entangled us and sometimes we get so caught up. May we not focus on the crisis that is happening in our world. We know where this world is headed. We know what's going to happen next. We know things will start to calm down and, and earth starts to shake and many things will happen but we not but may we focus our eyes on who Christ is may that be something that we live may that be the thing that continuously anchors us and continuously sees our eyes on the prize i love the last words that the bible says and i close off with this revelation chapter 21 and i love it because this is this is jesus right here telling us the last words and i close off Revelation chapter 22, verse 20 says, He who is faithful witness to all these things says, Yes, this is Jesus' words. Yes, I am coming soon. And we say, Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. May the grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's holy people today. Let me pray together with you. Father, Lord, I thank you so much that this faith factor that we live is focused on looking at you. May we live a life fixed our eyes on you, Jesus. May we not focus on the crisis, but may we focus on who Christ is. And Lord, we know that you spoke many times through many ways, and you left promise after promise in our lives. May we live a life full of faith, full of confidence, may we fuel ourselves with knowing the promises that you have for us, knowing that you're coming back and taking us home. And not just us, but our families. So may we prepare those around us is our prayer in Jesus' name. Together we all say amen and amen. God bless you. Amen. Thank you, Pastor. Come on and, and join us. Beautiful, beautiful. You know,
he kind of reminds me a little of, of you. Is that right? I, I heard a little of Dr. Taylor coming out of him you know, every once in a while. A tall like equation of it. <laughs> 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 oh, thank you. Praise God, praise God. Uh, you know, it's all, all about faith. Mm. All about faith. Mm. I love Pastor Rosario. You know, he was very instrumental in um, my kids' spiritual life. Mm. And uh, I really appreciate your message. You know, very good. Mm. Daryl, this idea of faith, now he mentioned, uh, started out by mentioning a few things that faith, faith is not. Mm -hmm. Well, there are a list of those. Uh, one that he, it's the first on the list, and kind of happy to see it on your list uh, personally, but feelings. Feelings. Faith is not feeling. And isn't that mm. what good old time religion, doctoring, so solid, you know, uh, straight and narrow doctrine, isn't that being given up for the experience and feeling? Mm. I agree. It is. Yeah. Any examples that come to mind for you? Well, okay. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Um, you look at uh, um, what was it? John twenty twenty nine. Yeah. Jesus is talking to Thomas, and Thomas went complete opposite direction of feeling. Mm. He, was, he wanted to touch. He wanted to see. And Jesus said, Thomas, you believe because you have seen. Yeah. Blessed are those who have not seen, yeah. but believe. And at the opposite end of that spectrum is faith just based on feeling and excitement without any foundation there at all. And oh, it's a fine balance because, okay, um, experience and seeing, that's one thing. Another thing is you can't calculate it with logic because faith itself is illogical. There's nothing logical about it. You are putting belief and faith in something that is, there's no evidence. You haven't seen it. You haven't experienced it. And um, so, okay, we're just going to wash away everything that gives foundation and just go by feeling. And we have extremes. Well said. Uh, Sheila. Yeah, I thought it was interesting what uh, Pastor Osario also talked about, wishful thinking. It's not yeah. wishful thinking. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, that's so true. I mean, we could wish for this, but when, when you look at that Hebrews 11 verse, it's the hall of fame of faith, mm -hmm. you know. And they did not see, just like Abraham. He changed his name, God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many Right? Is that right? Um, but he changed it without even having kids yet. Right. Sarah was not even pregnant yet. But he trusted God's word. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, you know, whatever we're going through, what Ganem's going through right now with his daughter, all yeah. those people, the miracles in the Bible, right. they just said, uh, you know, the centurion says, yeah. just say the word. Yeah, and he would be healed. And he said, I haven't yeah. seen a faith like this in all of yes. Israel, right? Yes. Even in his own people. So when God says the word, mountains are formed. Mm -hmm. So whatever chaos we're going through, you know, it's yeah. funny that you said fear factor and faith factor. I mean, we don't have to watch a show for fear factor. Yeah. You just turn on the news. It's yeah. everything around you. Life is full of fear. That's what Satan wants to do to us. Mm -hmm. But God wants us, to, I like what you said, to focus on Christ keep our eyes on him and, and believe in him that he came and that he will deliver us. Yeah. Well, and that brings us to sight. 
which is, was his last point. So what are your comments on, on faith is not by sight? Not by sight. You notice in Hebrews 12, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. They're in the stands. They're cheering you for us. The basketball game, yeah, yeah, they're yeah, cheering. Yeah, yeah. They're there, you see. Mm. And the faith factor, you notice in Hebrews 11, mm. verse 1, what is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Noah, the ark. That man must have water on his brain, building a boat and all of this. <laughs> yeah. There's something wrong. But notice the first two words there in Hebrews 11. Now faith. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, I really like that word substance. Yeah, the, the substance. <laughs> of things not seen. What's some, <laughs> define that kind of substance. Mm. See, but it's the now faith. It's that personal experience, like G.G. Yeah. said, of yeah. Sheila said, keeping our eyes on Jesus. It's that personal relationship mm -hmm. and experience we have with the Lord. Glory, a hallelujah. Abraham, Abraham, Amen. his son. We have to have that personal experience. Amen. I would be theological and call it the existential thing. Mm -hmm. Who knows what we mean by that? But it means a personal relationship mm -hmm. with him, the eyes on Jesus. We are surrounded by the great cloud of witnesses. And the race is not given to the fastest. All the young people would outrun us. You would outrun me. Your stride would be longer, you mm. see. But run patiently. Keep it going. Mm. Keep it going. That's right. Keeping your eyes on whom? Mm. Jesus. Right. Right. The faith factor. Now faith. I must have it. Not was, well, here's what mom and dad used to do, you see. Here's what Marlon does. And here's what Daryl will do and Sheila and our speaker tonight. But now faith, personally, what it does for me, I'm trusting him. Amen. In the future, we will need that now faith. I've learned all these mm -hmm. things in school. Now I've heard them on Christian Connection. Now, here we are, it's here. The skies rolled back. That little cloud that the size of a man said, now, they, oh, this is what it's all about. My eyes on him. The now experience, the substance, real substance, Amen. the things hoped for, yeah. not mm. feeling. Wow, what a great, great segue into uh, uh, musical med meditation, that's all I can yeah. Describe it, uh, Sheila. Yes, we get to hear again from our wonderful friend, Gigi Joel, and she is singing the perfect song, I think. And it's mm -hmm. called I Surrender All. Yes. You know, um, we just surrender our wishful thinking mm -hmm. and just rely on the faith that Jesus saves and Jesus already paid the price for us yes. that we can be the eye on Him. So we surrender all. I Surrender All by Gigi Noel. Thank you. Oh. 
me Savior, holy thine. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Make me truly holy thine. All I am, all I have, I give. I loved it when she drops by and pays to submit it. You know, Jesus, Gigi has been involved in the ministry for quite a few years. Daryl, she has even done some programs for us. Many sh shows, yeah, including on our sister network, Smart Lifestyle TV. Yeah, especially. Uh, yes, we shoot a lot of uh, um, nutrition bits and shows with her uh, students. Uh, really worth checking out. So go to uh, www.llbn.tv and uh, you will be able to see all the channels uh, on the website. Isn't that true, Sheila? That's right. Um, you get to see the Christian uh, connections, Christian life. Um, what is the other channel called? Um, oh, His Light. His Light. Oh. That and, also. And all those foreign channels. Uh, yes. Yes. Right? of them and seem to be adding them uh, all the time. Yes, There's we are. a Romanian channel still in the works uh, to uh, take the good news, this great news, <laughs> the news that the pastor uh, has brought us uh, all around the world. Uh, if you're just joining us, you notice that Ganem is uh, noticeably absent. Uh, he, last uh, many days, has been a little hard on his family as his daughter, uh, Nora, in her mid-30s, uh, the mother of Chloe, uh, seven years old, uh, has been uh, having real di medical difficulties. And uh, so we appreciate your prayers uh, at this time for him. Uh, you know, Chloe's foundation has uh, been inspired uh, by that seven-year-old. And uh, now her mother uh, really needs all of our prayers, so I want to thank you for reaching out to, to Jesus to ease her pain and comfort uh, her family. Well, we've been talking about faith, uh, mm -hmm. speaking of which, uh, and how valuable it is in the Christian experience, but nobody has said anything about works. Um, Pastor Jonathan, if my faith is works, do I tend to lean on my good works? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, I love it because um, I think the book of James, I love the book of James. Is, it's a book that, you know, we could talk about all we want and, and we can have all this, I guess, knowledge of it. But then I love it, James, because he brings it to the practicality of our Christianity, right? Mm -hmm. And I love it because he says, you know, he brings up this idea of faith and works. And so I think there's a beautiful thing that I've always tended to see it the way that if we 
the moment we start to believe and trust God, God will allow us to take the next step forward. And whatever that looks like for, you know, we talked about different, like I shared a little bit about Peter, God called him forth out of that water. And it took for him to take that action of faith, right? There's going to be things that God calls us out to. Abraham, mm -hmm. leave the place and I will show you, right? And it's, it's that journey with God that the moment we start this relationship with Jesus, the moment we continually fix our eyes on him, there's been moments that are going to be, God is going to say, hey, well, it's time for you to, to take that leap of faith, time for you to step forward. And so those are the moments, I mean, for my life, I've, I've been able to see that and the moments, mm -hmm. you know, leaving California and going to Michigan, you know, Andrews and going through the winters. I had never known what a scraper was in my life until I went to Michigan. Somebody said, hey, you're gonna need this. And I'm like, what is this? And I remember the first winter storm came in. And I was like, I remember everybody had their scrapers kind of taking out the snow from their car. And that moment I realized, I was like, man, okay, I, yeah, this is what I needed. And so those are the moments stepping out. And then after that, we would have never known that God was leading us to Texas. And then now God in this season would lead us back to California. So it's those moments that where we kind of journey with Jesus and Jesus allows us to take that step forward, whatever that looks like, you know. Now, if you've gotten the message, uh, don't put away the scraper yet. Right. <laughs> well, you know what's funny is that I, I think, I don't even, I think I gave it to the next seminary. I said, hey, you're gonna need this. So I gave it to him. So he's, I bet you he's using it as well. But that is, you know, you can't go through a seminary or through school in Michigan without yeah. one of those, so for sure. Yeah, but you notice in that now faith experience, in that factor, he needed the scraper, he had faith, he, he'll get it done. There you go, right? <laughs> and uh, I remember as a boy there in mm. Philadelphia, mm. near the art museum, the school Peel River, I received them from the university mm. in the boat races. Not one oar, they'd be going in circles. To go straight, mm. yeah. you need the faith and the works to move it ahead. Yes. A faith that works. Mm. You need both oars moving forward, keeping your eye on the goal. Mm. And that goal is Jesus Christ himself, you see. And those who in the stands, that great cloud of witnesses, ah, Osorio, look, his eyes on Jesus. Mm. That's the factor mm. as we listen to Gigi. You know, my tribute to whom? Jesus. Mm -hmm. Eyes on him. Yeah. And then I surrender all. She sings, I surrender all. Made it beautiful. We think of surrender as defeat. Mm. But in this case, with the faith factor, it's mm. victory. That's right. Yeah. It's victory. And that's what it's really all about. And I appreciate this mm. fact that we can see it, but it's not my trying. Mm. It's his dying. Mm. And yeah. my keeping his eye mm. on him. That's right. I would say for most that surrender is the biggest act of faith that, mm. that can be done. Look at Jesus um, in Gethsemane. Mm. You know, he begged, please let this pass from me. But then he surrendered, not my will, but yours. Oh, excellent. Yeah. And that's when the biggest thing in all of our lives happened, a result of that surrender. Yeah. Well, on his and, part. And surrender brings great power. I mean, you may, mm. mentioned the book of James. You know, uh, mm. James 4, 7 comes yeah, to mind. Yeah, yeah. One of the greatest promises of the, of the Bible, especially mm. if you're harassed by Satan. It says, you know, surrender yourselves to God. That's right. And the devil, what? Flee. Shall. Yeah. It is not a choice. Right. right. You know, it's not like, well, I'll just see what happens. Yeah. He shall Flee means leave mm. immediately, right. right? And that is the power of surrender. And that's what the surrender, I mean, we look at the disciples, John, or not John, but especially uh, Peter, you know, Paul uh, had, had that, even Thomas, you know, when Jesus says, give me your finger, mm -hmm. you know, he, he kind of surrendered there, didn't he? Right. I think all of the disciples, basically, they were all teenagers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They basically surrendered, yeah. left behind to follow Jesus. And I think, I think that's, that's all our mission, basically, to get out of the comfort zone, yeah. whether it's the comfort zone of, oh dear, you know, the health of mm. Ganem's daughter. Yeah. You know, that's, yeah. that's surely out of mm. the comfort zone. Right, right. But it's leaping out and knowing, hey, 
God is all-knowing. Yeah. He's the beginning and the end. He came. He died for us. Yeah. He knows. He knows. You know, he, he's the great healer. We can trust him, just like Abraham was able to. I mean, I, I forget what chapter it was, but he basically says, um, who can tell me what to do? Mm. Who, can who can tell God what to do, right. right? God knows everything, and he loves us deeply. Yeah. That's why he sent his son Jesus, so we can be with one with him. I love that. He says, my thoughts are not your thoughts. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you my ways are higher than your ways. <laughs> yeah, comprehend. You know, just... <laughs> Just, you nope. know, that, that foundation of faith to hang on yeah. when we can't see. Just hang on. Hang on to Jesus. Mm. Keep our, our eyes on him. And it's interesting, Sheila, because it, it makes me think. And one of the things that I've had to learn, I guess, and we've had to learn in our spiritual life is that I, I love what somebody said. It says faith that can be that 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 can be tested, can be trusted. And I think everybody, if you look at Hebrews 11, everybody had a moment of testing. Peter had that moment. Abraham, we've been talking about people of faith. Noah had a moment of testing. The people laughing at him, right? That test moment. Yet when we see the thing, it allows us to go deeper in that trust of him. And so mm -hmm. I just love those elements as well that, yeah, if you're somebody's facing a testing or a trial moment that, you know, maybe that's be a moment that God is working it for your good and allowing you to go deeper in your trust of him. You know, so that's another element that for me I find. I, I like what you said. Crisis to Christ. Yeah. And I like when you're tested, it's a testimony That's of right. God's right. being present with yeah. you. And I, I, I like the story of Daniel too, when he was in the lion's den. Right. He wasn't necessarily saying, please shut the lion's mouths. He was saying, be present with me. Mm during this time, because that's all we need is God being present. That's our goal, is to get to that point of faith that I just want Jesus and with me. Yeah. Did you notice the faith factor there? Mm -hmm. They had no ideas that the lions would not bite. Yeah. The fiery furnace would not burn them. That's right, that's right. They went in on that faith factor. That's right. Now faith, personal. The brother of Jesus, the book of James, when they prepared his body for death, he said his knees were like that of a camel, calloused, mm. where he spent time praying. I pray that our mm -hmm. knees will be that way as well, Amen. that oh, connection. Yes. Mm. That's right. right. I love that callous knees. My mom used to say that to me. You know, my knees were callous for you, <laughs> yeah. and we're doing that for my children, and we're doing that for everybody, yes, All, yes. for you, LBN, and I hope you're doing that for us as well. Yeah, and thank you, thank you for your prayers of support. There is a prayer line uh, that you can use. Uh, just go to the website and it'll tell you all about it. Uh, we wanna thank you for all of your support for this ministry through Jesus Christ. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Christian Connections. Uh, we'll see you next time.